Yo, 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 what is up YouTube? It's your boy Tono here and welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I will show you how to install and set up PCX2, the most famous ES2 emulator on your MacBook with the M series of processors. So it's pretty straightforward and easy. Double click in the link, you will find it in the description and you will be redirected into this web page. And in this case, you can either choose to download the latest stable or the latest nightly version. The nightly version is the most new one, uh, but could be even unstable. If you instead go for the latest stable, you know, this is a more solid build. So I would you recommend to download the latest stable. In this case, I will download the latest nightly because I have an M3 Pro MacBook Pro. So I don't have any problem about the processors. But maybe if you have lower tier macbooks pro or not pro choose the latest stable version i recommend you to do that anyway when you are here just click on latest nightly click on macOS version the download button you will see this screen popping up and then save the files wherever you want this is a compressed folder click on save i will save them inside the download folder i'm doing this thing with google chrome but you can also do it with safari there's not that much of a difference then you will see the download here just click on this icon so you see it inside the folder in this case it downloads folder you will have this file highlighted double click it it's going to extract it expanding means extracting in this case and then you see you have the file already extracted it's a very light application is not even 150 megabytes then you can either choose to leave it here or move it to the application section and you will be having it here if you double click on it you will have this popping up you click on open and then slow but steady you will eventually have it open Open. there you go you have this setup page there could be a chance in which you don't have that open pop-up but you have like a warning out of Mac OS that says you need to be careful because it could be a malicious software and so on but then there is two ways to solve that step no worries for the file itself it's a safe application it's just a security step of Mac OS so the first option is to go inside the privacy setting in your general setting and then you allow the application to run and i'm showing you a screenshot of what you should be having in your screen in that case but the second option could be pressing the control key while you click once on the icon of the application and then you click another time and then you will be having the pop-up another time but in this case you will have even the option called open and so that you can open and bypass let's say the kind of security control and then you stumble upon this page on the setup welcoming page pretty much you choose the language you choose the theme if you want it native fusion dark this is how pcx2 will uh, look like but then i suggest you to keep it as it is then you click on next and then here there is the BIOS image setup stage in which you need to have the biases of the PlayStation 2. I would recommend you to download the biases of European region, USA and Japan. So you are going to be able to play any kind of video game that was released, for example, only in specific countries without any problem. And of course, I cannot provide you where the biases can be found or the ROMs or the ISOs of the games, but internet is your friend and even my Discord server. So I suggest you to check it out because I will give you some useful pieces of information regarding how to find games where and maybe even how uh, where to find biases but it's up to you guys anyway without further ado let's dive deep into this step so pretty much whenever you will be having the the biases downloaded i would recommend you to create a folder in which you put the biases all together so that is easier for them to be recovered and i would do the same for the games file so pretty much you create two different folders one called ps2 games and one called ps2 biases when you get to this point click on browse then i will retrieve my folder in which I have BIOSes and then you click on open and as you can see these files are popping up so those BIOSes are loaded up inside the emulator if sometimes doesn't happen that you do the step and they don't pop up simply extract the BIOSes file and then extract even the games file because sometimes if you do not extract them they are not read by the application itself but then you click on next and then when it comes to game directories I already told you to create another folder in which you put all the ISOs the ROMs all the files dedicated to the games Remember, you need to own the games you are going to emulate in the physical copy and you need to own a PS2 from which you can extract the biases because the emulator application is legal, but emulation is not. So be aware of that. And then anyway, you pick up the folder in which you have put the files of the game. Then you click on open. Then this pop-up will come and then you click on yes. And then you click on next. 
And then here you can set up your controller. Either you plug it in directly throughout USB-C port or uh, USB Type-A port if you have a dongle or something else, or you connect your controller via Bluetooth. You can use either PlayStation controllers, Xbox controllers, and any kind of controller that can be connected via cable or via Bluetooth. And then you can connect the controller and then click on automated mapping and your controller will be all set up. As you can see here, straight off the bat, you can configure two controllers. In this case, I'm using a Xbox controller connected via Bluetooth and then you can in this case decide which kind of controller you want to configure in this case I'm going to configure a classic DualShock and then you click automatic mapping and then you click on SDL-0 that's my controller then you are more than good to go and then you click on next and then your setup is finished and this is the emulator itself with all the ROMs and the ISOs of the games you have downloaded. You can search for a game, you can filter them by the region, you can filter them by the type, etc. You can even have this view and then you can maximize or minimize it. You can download all the cover of the games. I will leave you the link in the description to be able to access the page dedicated to them. And then now we show you how to do that because it could be maybe a bit tricky. So you have to double click on the link I will leave in the description. It will lead you to this GitHub page for the ps2 covers and then you will see the tutorial set them up on tcx2 it's pretty straightforward and pretty easy when you are back in the screen in the emulator you go on tools you go in the cover downloader you copy paste the link and then you start process and there you go that's pretty pretty cool and very easy to do we we'll leave the link to access that github page in the description so make sure to check it out you can still decide to have them as a list or in this way of visualization then let's go to the step regarding the settings and so go on up to top in the left corner on interface as the first step and follow my steps much in interface i would not recommend you to change anything except for maybe starting from screen so the emulator will start in full screen and even the games and for the system language is up to you guys i would suggest you leave english but it's up to you you can check for updates it's very interesting because you can internally check for them. When it comes to games list, you can double check your directory. BIOSes is the same. For example, you downloaded other games and you want them to be rescanned because you put them inside the folder, but the emulator didn't see them. So basically, make them appearing in the emulator. You just can't find new games or rescan new games. You can click here and it's pretty straightforward and easy. When it comes to emulation, I would recommend you not to click anything here except for enable multi-thread or cheats if you know if you have knowledge about the cheats for specific games but otherwise leave it as it is. And here in the graphics tab is the one that we can pick a bit. So first thing first I would recommend you to keep on full screen mode. Aspect ratio I would suggest you to 16 by 9. It's the widescreen. These things keep them how they are. You can apply anti-blur and apply widescreen patches if some games are supporting it i would recommend you or to do that for the other options don't touch anything else go to rendering tab in this case internal resolution you can upscale it i would recommend you around 180p perfectly fine all the other things leave them as they are and enable me mapping in case it's not enabled if you want to download texture packages you can find them online and then you can basically upload them in this sub tab uh, called texture replacement if you want to download them and apply them to the games you're going to play but it's more a technical thing that i would not recommend you to do if you don't know what you're doing pretty much regarding post-processing effects you can enable fx aa it's up to you and even the intensity and sharpness of it but if you don't know what you are applying don't apply it and you are more than good to go instead when it comes to on-screen display i would recommend you to maybe click on show fps's if you are seeing that the emulation is not smooth so you can check what was the problem if it was fps's or something else and you can show as many statistics as you want but i would recommend you to keep it pretty much everything off except for tiny details so that your experience is very smooth and very clean and then when it comes to audio leave as it is it's pretty much all balanced and pretty fine but then when it comes to memory cards remember that the exact moment you will play a game and you will save for the first time a memory card will be created so no worries for that it's going to be an automatic process so you don't have to worry and then you have a memory card in which you can save all the files 
and all the games that you are playing with. Regarding network and HDD, I would not recommend you to touch it and I would not recommend you to do that if you don't want to have specific online experiences with PS2 games while emulated. And then you click on close and then you are good to go. You double click on a game and then you are able to run it without any problem. But in this case, as you can see, I'm playing and you have the audio of the game and etc. And that's perfect. That's really perfect. As you can see, I'm using my controller. You can hear the clicks and it's perfectly working. And this is Call of War 2 in widescreen and you have it pretty much straight in front of your eyes, running at 50 FPS. So guys, as you have seen, God of War 2 is completely playable. And then if you ever want to go back to the main menu of the emulator, but you want to restart your game in exact moment you pause it, you just click on ask and then you close the game, but you click exit and save state. This is a bit unstable. So remember that the emulator can crash, but you will go back to this page to reopen it and then click on load state and it will load state. I will show you that yeah, if you click on ESC and then close the game and then exit and save, the emulator crashes, but then you open it again. Then you come back here, double click, load state. And it works. It's just a, a further step you have to do because it's still a bit of a bug, let's say. So it is pretty much just the small downside of this emulator because otherwise this emulator works perfectly fine and it's amazing. So guys, without any further to tell you, I hope this tutorial was easy, quick and understandable by you. But if you have any doubt, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the comment section below and I will be more than happy to reply to your doubts. But from Tono was everything. Remember to leave a like, subscribe and comment and I will see you in my next video.